All right, what's up, y'all? It's Wooly here. So, really quickly, kind of want to touch on art swapping. Uh, basically, a while back, I was talking to somebody in game uh, who did ask me to cover it. I said when we do it in the videos, it's just too quick, and hey, that's understandable. Because uh, once you get it down, it's it's like second nature. It, it becomes very, very easy. So, like, the the biggest thing I can tell you guys is to set your artifacts in a certain placement where they're always going to be there um, so you know exactly where they're at. So when you click on your screen, you just go straight into it. So, obviously, I'm on PlayStation, um, so... I just have to hit the one button and go into my inventory. You know, we don't have to go over like that. Uh, there are times when you'll need to do that, but we'll talk about that later. So as far as the actual art swapping, how to do it, what do they do, why do you do it? Okay, so we'll start with Mercy. Um, Mercy is probably going to be the easiest one to talk about. Now, obviously, when you summon it, this is for summoning uh, your pets, right? Um, the, you know, any box that you got, mother box, father box, alpha box, all the boxes, right? Every single box out there, okay? Or Star Wars or whatever you got. Any kind of pet trinket, any henchman. Uh, I think it even covers the allies if I, you know, not really paid attention to it, but I'm pretty sure I've seen Crypto with the shield on it. But anyways, it, it covers any summon pets with a shield. Uh, 160 is where you want it to be. That's where you get the restorative module. That's where you get the reactive field. Now, there's two ways to run this. I mean, really, there's one, but there's two ways to run this. Now, obviously, uh, all the sweats that you see that run it, they're going to pop that thing right at the beginning. You've seen me do it plenty of times uh, right as soon as the before the instance even begins, like, while well, the, um, I guess dialogue is still running, we're already popping it, um, because you're still going to get that filled, and that's really all you need, is you want that green filled to pop, okay, now, I'm going to show you what I mean, so 160, like I said, is when the green filled, it's where you get the restorative module, uh, when healed, your pets, accomplice, henchman, sidekick, or trinket pet uh, will be healed for a percentage. And then the reactive field, summoning a pet trinket, uh, or sorry, a trinket pet damages all nearby enemies. Uh, so this only happens with your pets or henchmen when you actually summon them out. Right. Um, it does like a little AoE, so you do need to kind of be close, and that's what I'm talking about. So you don't actually need to have... Uh, attack protocol on your loadout you're still going to get the buff from it okay so let's say i'm just standing at the door i'm getting ready to go in i got mercy on i'm going to go ahead and summon bam there he goes and that's it the other way to do this is when you're actually standing close and you're actually in combat now, you see, when I summoned him right next to, let's say, these are the adds, it does deal some additional damage. Now, at 160, I think it's uh, 150%. I'm sorry, a 50%. Uh, and then at 200 is when you get the 100% damage increase. Uh, that's pretty much it guys that's really all you need it for uh unless of course you're a pet dps and you know feel free to just use it as you see fit but overall that's why you have mercy so 160 is absolutely fine uh that's where you want to get your mercy if you want to practice swapping it before then again absolutely fine because you're still going to get the um summon damage by standing close. Now you do have to be close to get it to proc that damage. Otherwise you still get the shield on it. And it's still um, 
is just a really big benefit to your pets overall, especially in something like Elite, right? So they don't die so quick. Um, one thing I will say about that is while you are actually in mid-combat and stuff like that, like if you have Robot Sidekick, if you have Crystal, if you have Fury, uh, or if you have, you know, your Quizlet out and stuff like that, like if you're actually in combat, you can see there, as long as I swap it in, and then I pop the Arc Lightning to get that heal, uh, the field goes off again. And so Quizlet now has that buff going again. So that's something that you can do while you're actually in combat without having to summon a pet. Um, or if it's already summoned, you know, something, like I said, like your already summoned pet, Robot Sidekick, Quizlet, Grim, whatever. Uh, just swap Mercy in for a second. You get that hill, swap it back out. Okay. Um, and just to clarify from the jump here, it's always going to be transformation card that needs to go in this slot. Um, it's never going to be Quizlet. It's never going to be Strategist card. Unless, of course, you're running E-Bonds, then you put E-Bonds down here. Or, you know, whatever. It's your preference. You just don't want Strat card. And I'm going to tell you why. Alright, so let me just go ahead and bring my strat down here. The reason you don't swap strat card is because it leaves you in this ugly, ugly animation uh, that takes you out of combat. It's that hand clap right there. You see that? So, so that's what you don't want. So this is why you swap transformation card. Okay, and that's it. That's it for Mercy. <clears throat> the next one, because how you always see these videos is people use Mercy, they summon their pets, and then they uh, go with Philosopher's Stone. So, Philosopher's Stone, <clears throat> basically, it widens the field of the supply drop, so it's a bigger area that's covered that people can run into and get that. Um, 160 is the sweet spot again that's where you get the eight second buff anything 140 and below is a four second buff which is fine uh, but you want to have that eight second buff as soon as you can so supply drop buff changes abilities to cost zero power meaning if i go out and i do this it's going to cost me zero power okay and we'll demonstrate that but um that runs for eight seconds instead of granting power regeneration. So you don't, you don't get uh, a big boost in power. So let's say you are at like a quarter of the power left on your bar. If you drop this and you run into it, it's not going to fill your power bar, but it will kind of act the same in the sense that now you can cast powers over and over and over and over again. So if something like gadgets where you go through your whole bar, You've got eight seconds where you can go crazy, okay? And that's why people love it. Um, and, like I said, increase the field size of the supply drop by 200%. Um, the supply drop cooldown reduced by 40 seconds each free power used. Uh, we don't really worry about that one. Um, and then the last one which we don't have yet, that's going to be rank 200, is double the duration of health, regeneration, damage above, and power free casting to yourself, um, unique to your own supply drop, right? Um, so, it's just a good thing to have. And I've got the orange lantern one. It doesn't matter. It puts that gold circle no matter what you have. So... You do want to wait until it actually pops like that, because if you drop it and then you run out, uh, there's a chance you might not actually get it until it, it fully lands and settles. But then you have that gold circle around you for uh, a few seconds, and you get that eight-second buff. Okay, and that's that's it. Very straightforward, right? Um, Dead King Scepter. Okay. So here's the thing with Dead King Scepter. 
at level 80, you can use this if you're just going to swap, right? So if I come over here and I say, okay, we got the beam going. So you can get that beam going at level 80. And I have uh, a video showing, you know, it's a, it's a short video that shows the difference that a low level um, Dead King will make just swapping it back and forth, right? It makes a difference on your single target damage. It really does. Um, and especially if you're using Ebon, you would have Ebon down here in this bottom slot. And so you would go through your rotation, right? You would bam, bam. And then right before you go to drop Ebon, you would swap Dead King in. You would pop your finisher. So that way you don't lose your stacks. And, you know, it works the same way whether it's Ebon or Amulet. And then you would get the benefit of using your finisher. Oh, I would have canceled it right there. But that's the idea behind it, right? So, how you actually use it, if you're not using something like E-Bonds, just swap it in and out, in and out. It has a couple of seconds before it procs, but if you get into the habit of doing that, You can see it at the top of the screen there, but, you know, that, that's pretty much it. Um, so that will work starting at level 80, I believe. Maybe it's 120. Um, but the there's a couple of different reasons why you want to swap it like that. Well, really, there's, there's one reason why you want to swap it like that. Obviously, the extra damage, but also the cooldown it grants. So every time that you swap it in and it pops like that, it's going to start cooling down. Um, and you can see here, reduces the cooldown of your stat buff, combat pet, henchman, and supply drop. Um, and that's why you swap it in and out. Let me answer him real quick. Okay, and so anyways, yeah, so every time you are getting it to proc like that, you're cooling down all of those things, okay? So that's why you use it. It's not just for the damage, that's an added bonus, um, but it is for the cooldown as well. If that makes sense, I hope that makes sense. If it doesn't, you know, drop a comment and we'll, I'll try to circle up with you. Um... The last thing that I want to touch on as far as Dead King is the orbital assistance, which is that extra beam that comes down. Now, here's the thing. It works, you know, as far as getting it to proc, you do have to swap it in and out, unless you're just going to straight run it, which I don't recommend. There's other artifacts that are far better. This is just a swap artifact, right? Even if you don't want to swap it in and out like that, that's fine. You at least want to get it for the main swap when you're at 200, because at 200, and only at 200, when you drop it, okay, it's going to keep running for 30 seconds. So we'll just sit here and we'll watch it now. So you can see it's just going off by itself, and it's gonna do this for, I believe, 30 seconds, as long as you are in combat, right? And so there you go. That's that's pretty much Dead King. So those are the reasons to run it. But to get that orbital assistance like that, uh, you, like I said, 
it has to be 200 to where it will run for like the next 30 seconds by itself. I think it's 30 seconds. Yeah, for 30 seconds after calling for an orbital strike, orbital assistance will happen more frequently. And obviously that's at the end of the list there. That's the last buff that you get from it. So that's the 200, uh, the rank 200 buff. <clears throat> okay. Um, all right. So those are the main artifacts. Obviously there are other artifacts that people do swap depending if you're Mitre Prep um, or what kind of build you're running. All right. So let me get out of combat real quick because... Let me give you guys the sauce right here. A lot of people already do this. A lot of people are already familiar with this. But if you're new to art swapping, you want to art swap, and you want to know exactly what to get, here's what you need. Obviously, um, Mercy, Philosopher's Stone, and Dead King should be the ones that you would typically go for first. Obviously, Dead King being the one that you want to 200 first. Mercy and Philosopher's, Philosopher's Stone are pretty good at 160 you do want to get them to 200 i want to get mine to 200 too um but at 160 they're a phenomenal help okay it can't be understated how big of a help they are and how much extra damage you get by running them uh and everybody's gonna love you for the philosopher's stone okay so the last two that i'm running right now and then of course i'll be using ebon later but we're not doing that yet. Uh, and scrap. I don't have my scrap on me, and I don't feel like going to go get it. But basically, when scrap, if you don't have EOG, then you would just swap scrap in when your supercharge is about, at least how I use it. You, you use it how you want. How I use it is when my supercharge is about three quarters of the way. Because if I swap let's say even a 140 scrap in when my uh, supercharge is about three quarters of the way filled. If I swap scrap in, uh, I do a couple of hits, it's going to be filled. And then I can go ahead and pop my supercharge. So even a 140 scrap, is going to be of a huge benefit to you. And then of course it does boost your supercharge slightly. Uh, and then you swap it back out. But I don't have my scrap on me, so I'm just going to demonstrate uh, the sauce with flute and I and Gemini. So obviously you do want I Gemini at 200 to get the 5%. Just look at the very bottom of Pollux's gaze. All you really want to look at is standing in Pollux's gaze grants 5% my precision and visualization. So it does not matter if you have anybody in your circle or not. Obviously the more people in your circle, the better for you. Um, and then, of course, they get a buff from standing in it, but trying to get people in your circle, like pulling teeth, right? So don't worry about that. You want yours at 200. That is when you get the 5% buff. You don't get the 5% buff if you are not at 200. So if you're at 180, you don't get a 5% buff. If you're at 160, you don't get a 5% buff, right? So it has to be at 200 to get that 5% buff, okay? So... Here's the thing. You want to stack flute and EOG. So how do you do that? The only thing you really need to know about flute is the higher you get it, you know, the higher its level, the stronger its chances of proccing and sending out those rats are. Okay, so mine's at 160. And you don't need to have it on. All you need to do Right, let's say I come over here. I hit my target once. I can swap it out. And now I have 30 seconds to go in and put on I and Gemini. And you can see the rats are running. So now I've got uh, extra damage coming out. From the flute. And then I'm getting that 5% buff from Eye of Gemini. Okay. So, again, you don't need to keep it in. All you need to do is put it in, hit your target once, swap it out, and then you can start. Or, and then you have 30 seconds to do your supercharge. And there it goes. It takes off again. I believe, I don't know about 188. 
but I know at 200 you get the big rats. <laughs> you know, big rats. Okay, so <clears throat> that's it. Flute is very, very easy to use. Swap it in, hit something with it, and then hit that same target with your supercharge, and flute will go off. So it does not need to be in. You just need to put it in, hit something, take it out, and then you've got 30 seconds to put something else there, whether that's scrap, whether that's EOG. Up to you. doesn't matter. So if you don't have EOG, let's say you just have scrap, then you would put flute in, Hit your target when your supercharge is about three quarters of the way. Um, swap flute out for scrap. And throw a couple hits out so you max your supercharge. And then you can go ahead and pop it. And then you get the benefit of scrap. And you get the buff and benefit from flute. Well, not buff, but the benefit of flute, the extra damage that it does, right? So it does a percentage um of your damage dealt um it does need to be noted this only works with direct damage supercharges which is why i'm running megavolt and not circuit breaker right um so something like big gun on munitions you know it it has to be direct damage it doesn't work with anything that's above like neovenom like circuit breaker or anything like that so uh, it has to be um, a supercharge that deals direct damage, which is why you see a lot of gadgets prep that run the fear gas. Well, not the fear gas, I don't know, the canister, whatever it is, that supercharge, forget the name of it, um, as one of their superchargers. You know, they'll have that in their stealth alongside Neo Venom, and that way they can stack both. Uh, but they get the benefit of using flute that way that's why rage uses berserk because berserk does direct damage so that's it those are the artifact swaps now if you want to see how it all looks in action like i said uh we'll do that really quick i like to keep my trinket right here because after i summon my pets right so let's say i pop this in i summon my box i go back i take it out and then i can immediately put in my trinket uh, keep your stuff set wherever you like, wherever your, your preference is on what's going to be easiest for you to get to that artifact. Because all you need to do is hit start uh, and then go into your screen. And after you do this for a while, I recommend, you know, going to practicing in omnibus raids, practicing on... Uh, open world bounties, getting used to your swaps. After you do it for a little bit, it really does become second nature and you get very used to it, okay? Um, so let me show you what it all looks like in real time, right? So All right, that's it. That's everything. And that is pretty much how you art swap, okay? Uh, the only thing I think I was going to mention after that is about going into a different screen. Now, this happens when you... Let me just show you. It's super annoying. I don't know if they're going to fix that with the hot fix for a PS5 or not. But uh, basically... Let's say you um, get a skill point or something, right? Then 
now, no matter what I do, all right, if I hold the start button and I go over to the left to my inventory, it should automatically open up to my inventory. But instead, it takes me back to the stat point tree. So that's what you don't want to happen. Um, that is super annoying because it makes it very hard to swap, okay? And the way to fix that is go ahead and get your stat point saved to all your armories. Um, go, you know, to your base, switch base, something like that. Usually I just go to my base. And then once you are in a different area, make sure you immediately open up into your inventory. Oh, your inventory. And now you're reset to where you're on your inventory. So what you don't want to happen is to be stuck um, getting like a skill point right before you go into a raid. And then you are stuck in the middle of the raid trying to swap artifacts because it's super annoying having to go over into your inventory. It is very, very annoying. All right. So anyways, that is pretty much it, guys. That is how you do the art swapping. Um, I hope this is helpful. Because somebody wanted me to kind of break it down a little bit, but there's not really much to say. It's just once you start doing it, you'll get the hang of it. And the more you do it, the easier it gets. And then you can start adding more and more artifacts. So you don't need to try to do all these artifacts at once. Um, just, you know, pick them up as you go. Uh, Mercy and Philosopher's Stone would probably be my first two recommendations. And then just because you can get those to 160 a lot easier. And then Dead King will be the one that you get to 200 where you like I said if you just want to use it for the swap in and out in and out on something like single target or if you you munition you can use it on your AOE loadout because you got channeling powers there uh, perfectly fine to keep that one at 80 or 120 uh, 80 is just where you get it to proc and drop the beam 120 is where you start getting the 10% cooldown okay so 120 is ideally the sweet spot that you want for uh, Dead King. But as far as Mercy and Philosopher's Stone, 160 is where you really want to get them. Okay. Uh, so I hope this is helpful. Let me know if you have any questions down below. And I'll catch you next time. We'll be out. Stay frosty. Peace.